Doors are open. Come on in. You've just come in time to have a look at this. And no, the title is not clickbait. I really am sick. I really have had enough. But more on that in a couple of minutes or so. In the meantime, we're here today in the garage. Now I'm missing all this glorious weather outside. Look at that up there. It's ages since we had blue skies like that. Absolutely amazing. And it's lovely and warm this year in here at the minute as well. Now, due to the fact that I've got not a lot of roof up here in the garage at the minute, there's a lovely breeze sitting in here and it's circulating nicely so it's not too hot, although it'll warm up in a few minutes when I start doing some of the work I've got to be doing. Anyway, I've been busy in here in the last couple of days while the sun's been out making the most of it. So this joist here was uh, completely rotten at that end. So I've replaced that end. The shadow makes it look it's got a notch in it. It hasn't actually got a notch in it. It's just a shadow from the sun shining on the brickwork. But I've replaced it um, with a sister joint. Now that's the sister joint. There's a bit of steel C channel on there. I folded that up from uh, from bits of uh, straight metal, sheet metal that I had lying around. Folded that up, put a few holes in it. Yeah, the bolts on that side are a, a tad long. They want trimming, but I can do them when the roof's on. And I've joined the two together. Obviously, there's uh, the screws going through the underneath, if you can see them there, there's one. The screw's going through the underneath of the channel to hold the two bits of wood together. And then there's that sister joint sitting on top and uh, that sort of grips the two together. It's got grip washers in the middle. Now this is what a grip washer looks like. Those grip washers actually cut and dig into the wood on both sides. When the grip, the resist turning, so the joist's in there, it can't move. I did uh, put a fairly hefty bit of weight on there yesterday. Well, me and uh, my feet were totally off the ground and it didn't move at all, it didn't even creak and there was no splintering sound, which is always a good thing when you're hanging yourself by the arms, I hasten to add, off, uh, off a joist in the middle of a garage. So as you can see, that one pretty much ends there and there's nothing across that notch in the top of the wall. So I cut that off yesterday, it was absolutely rotten. That's the remains of it there. And I've also cut the length of wood that's going to be the replacement for it. So today's job is to get the bit of metal channel on the bottom of that bit I've cut and that joist that's up there and then join the two together with a sister joint. So a bit of drilling, a bit of, <laughs> a bit of screwing, just, just what you want this time of year on a lovely hot day like this. So a bit of screwing in the garage and then a bit of drilling in the garage. It's all going to be pear shaped, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, right now I've got gloves on today because of the mess in here and obviously the threat of splinters, which I don't want. So this bit of channel, as I say, I folded that up from a bit of bare metal now. As you can see, it's all been treated inside, so it's not rusty inside. I know it's rusty on the outside, but that'll clean off when the rest of the garage is finished before the uh, the insulation goes in. Now what I need to do, first of all, is drill some holes in here. By the way, I've measured this. This is two foot long. I put a line at the foot mark, because I'm going to have a foot on either side of the, old, the original joist and the new bit of joist. And I've marked roughly four inches apart the two holes on either side that I need to drill so I can put the screws in and connect the two bits together. So I'll just get on, get that done. And that's all the indentations put in there, so hopefully the drill's not going to slide around at all and it's going to go straight through. That's the idea, anyway. Before I do that, I'm going to get the bit of wood I'm going to be using. And that's going to give me something to drill through to, because the other day when I tried this, I snapped a couple of drill bits. And obviously I don't want to run out of drill bits and I have to go out and buy some more. That's a bit of a relief. So that's four holes drilled. Now I've just got to make sure I get this on the proper side because I wanted this side to be where it connects with the new joist or with the original joist. Now it is a little bit 
oversized. But well, that doesn't matter. Stay. Now the screws that I'm using are some nice long, I think they're about four inches, three inches, four inch screws. And I'm going to put these in here to hold this in place because there is more holes to be drilled yet. But obviously I want this held in place first. Nice. So that's connected now. So the way it works is the joist goes through that slot on the wall. That I pointed out before. Of course I'm too close now, aren't I? Never goes right, does it? It's never easy. Hang on. That's a bit better. Right. So this bit of joist through the slot in the wall and then it'll meet up to there like that so we're going to have this original bit of joist this new bit of joist going to be a bit of a sister joist there as well a sister joint there you know see this will screw in from underneath on the old joint on the old joist and once that's all leveled up That'll be another joist done. Well, typically, all the batteries die together. So the camera went off. I'm not sure how much you did see. Got the holes drilled, but the camera battery died. The camera went off, and then the battery and the drill dried. Dried? No, the battery and the drill died. So the battery from the camera's on charge, the battery and the drill's on charge. I'm going for a cup of coffee. Isn't it typical? The curse of YouTube, all the batteries dying at the same time. You wouldn't believe it, would you? At least I've got the holes drilled while the cameras were dead. I've got a couple of bolts through so I can get those bolted up. It does give me the chance while I'm bolting these up to mention the title of the video. Obviously, as I said, it's not really clickbait. Well, okay, there might be a little bit in there. But the thing that I'm sick of, the thing that I'm having enough of, and I don't really want to do anymore, is working outside. I mean, it would have been fantastic today to work outside, because the weather's amazing. And it's been amazing all day, and it was yesterday, and it was the day before that as well. Which probably also means it's not going to last very long. And it's probably going to start raining in the next couple of days. Which is why I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible and get the roof back on. Because there's nothing worse than putting a, taking a car apart outside. And you just get the part you need off the car, ready to replace it. And it starts lashing down with rain. Or it gets too late in the day. Or you get a phone call, you've got to go and do something. Or it's time to go to work, or it's time to go to bed. And then, of course, once you get in the dark hours, you've got to have a light on. With a light annoy the neighbours. With a rant and rave at you if you make too much noise at that time of the night. Honestly, working in the drive, it's right pain in the neck. Plus the fact, by the time you get all the tools out to do what it is you need to do, and then take the time to get halfway through the job before you have to quit. And you've got to put all the tools away, you've got to put bits back on the car again, the car's still standing in the drive, going nowhere, doing nothing. I tell you, it's so much easier 
to have somewhere like this indoors under cover to be able to work on the car. Now granted, as you can see, it's only big enough for one car. But even though it's only big enough for one car, if I get one car in, and then I can get that worked on, get that running, get that out and get another one in. So no matter what the weather's like or what time of day or night it is, I'm still going to have somewhere I can work on the car and get the car and get the job done. And when the weather's like this, because of how many cars I've got, when the weather's like this, and it is a pleasure to work outside in the driveway. There's not a problem with working outside in the driveway. You have a choice. Well, you have a choice as long as you don't want to work indoors on the Hilux, because the Hilux is far too tall to fit in here. I think it's very nearly a foot taller than the top of the garage door. So that's not coming in here. But that doesn't need much work done to it at the minute. Well, fingers crossed, as far as I know. And I think we're just about there. We're getting these bolts tightened up. And these, of course, are holding the metal C channel in place, which is going to be the main support for underneath that joist when it gets put up there. I look very pale on that camera. I must not have the settings right. Hopefully it can see me okay and hopefully it can hear me okay. Oh, missed, I think, with the battery dying on the camera before as well. Missed YouTube gold. I think the battery died on the camera just as yet another drill bit snapped. Which, of course, means you also missed all the um, colourful terminology I was using to describe the fact that rather tediously I had snapped yet another drill bit. So it looks like I'm in the market for some decent drill bits. Again. I think they're both tight enough. And obviously they're sticking out a little bit. But once they're up there, connected to the joist and the roof's on, I can take care of those bits sticking out with the angle grinder. Right, so I'll put these J-clamps on, or these clamps on here, just to hold that in place while I was getting that put on there. So they can come off now. That should be nice and solid now. All I need to do, I'll put you in a better position. I'll get this up there, and then we can start getting ready to cut that to the right size and get everything else clamped up, and hopefully get that final joist bit done today. And this, in case you're wondering, is a Black & Decker Scorpion. Scorpion. Right then, let's get this wood cut, and then we'll see how we're doing for time after that. Right, come on then, own up, put your hands up if you thought I was going to force you to sit all the way through me, cutting that there with a the saw. Yeah, there's a couple, there's a couple, and I bet there's a couple out there as well that were ready with the fast forward button, just to spin through that bit as well, because you thought I was going to show the whole thing. See, got one over you. Of course, well done, if you'd already figured out that I wasn't going to do that, and I was going to cut the chunk out in the middle, in the edit. Incidentally, in case you're wondering why I'm using a black and thicker scorpion instead of a circular saw which would be a lot quicker because let's face it a circular saw zing and it's done well I haven't got a circular saw so is anybody out there listening you know along the lines of um, Milwaukee Ryobi anybody like that if you're listening or if you're watching I should say and you fancy send me a, a circular saw to evaluate for you, of course, if you're thinking of building a new one or designing a new one, and you want somebody to evaluate it for you. I wouldn't mind doing that. All part of the service, of course. I certainly wouldn't mind doing that. Right then. 
bit of wood. And it should be the same size as this. It is. Perfect size. I'll leave them again in a minute. Just leave them there for now. This is a problem at the minute in this garage. I've got nowhere to put anything because everything's just lying all over the place. Tell me what yes. I'm going to do dinner shortly. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I need to drill a couple more holes. I'll stand that up there for now so I know where it is. Oh no, I've got the holes drilled in there, so that's ready to go. Right then, now the next job is obviously going to be a case of getting this up there, getting it screwed in from underneath so it's held there, put another support under it to hold it and give it the extra support it needs whilst I'm attaching that bit that I've just cut between this, or overlapping this bit and that a bit above your head. But, as we're getting on on time, and obviously with a gaping hole in the roof here at the minute, I'm not exactly sound conscious, I'm not, it's not sound conscious is it, it's uh, sound friendly, that's the word, I'm not exactly sound friendly to the neighbours. I'm going to go in, check on the batteries, try and find some new drill bits that I can use next time round, and then in the next part, this hopefully will get up there, that'll get clamped and drilled and bolted, and then I can take down, actually, let me show you the stuff that's got to come down yet. So this is all the stuff that's got to come down, it's all Weetabix, I believe at one point it was that USB board, by the looks of the strands in there. And of course I've just left that up there because it doesn't give much protection, but it gives a small amount and it's easy enough to come down, you just sort of grab a handful, and it just splits away so it's obviously been up there a huge amount of time so that's all got to come down that's got to come down if i can get the roof panels on but uh next time round we'll get that joist there connected to that wall there and then i've got to put these noggins in these bits so i'll put them in here and put them in there and i should be able to get at least one more row of metal panels on so it'll look like that and that'll close a bit more in and then more of that lot over there can come over here creating more space down this side for us to go further along and get some more of the garage done okay so it's the next day and it's another fantastic day look at that more gorgeous blue skies outside it's not often we get sunshine like that and it's lovely and warm as again as yesterday there's a nice cool breeze in here because of the gaping hole in the roof, which I'm about to try and seal up. What I wanted to do, I didn't want to leave the video there and, uh, and just get the joist part in. So what I thought I'd, want, I'd like to do is to get the video, to sort of round the video off. I want to get the joist in and fully bolted in as well, so I can move on to get the noggins done. Well, I'll try and get this done as quickly as possible. Because when it's like this and it's so nice outside, I don't want to be inside working on the garage roof. I want to be outside playing with the cars. So this is how far we've getting in the last couple of minutes. Now, as you can see, the joist's in lines up pretty well up there and it goes all the way along and sitting nicely in the notch on the wall now those two bolts you can see there they're both loose at the minute so they'll move around at the back as you know they're not all the way and they need tighten up but i wanted to leave those loose until i've got this bit clamped up and those two holes drilled and the bolts through there as well connect the entire thing and then i'm going to take this bit of wood and that's going to go across there like that and that'll have two bolts drilled in either side of that black line so that'll hold that in place what i'm thinking is because of this metal brace that's on there, that's at stop, the minute stopping the two bits of joist from dropping down over, but I need to tie something here at the top. So if I get this across there and get that bolted in, that's gonna make this impossible to move and it should be nice and strong. It's not gonna really hold any weight on it. It's just gonna take a couple of those metal panels you can see over there. So it's gonna have, I think it's three or four of those in a row. All right, now I've adjusted the settings on the camera. So, you can't really see me at all, but you can see this, and this is the bit that you need to see, obviously. So I'm going to drill two holes through here, straight through, put bolts in, and then we'll get the nuts on and get them tightened up. We'll get these two tightened up as well, and that'll be that section done. Now 
hopefully you can see this. I know you can't see me. It's not a bad thing altogether, like, is it really, to be fair? Right. A couple of bolts here to go in. I've got a couple of nuts to put on them as well. Obviously these have to be nice and tight. And then when they're tightened up, they'll actually help clamp the metal to the joist. I don't think that one's going anywhere. Get these ones too, other ones done. I'll just get this last one in. Once again, when these are done and the roof's on, I can trim the long pieces of the remainder of the thread on the other side. Oh, let's get these clamps off. So this is how neat that looks along there. So that's all nicely pinched into place along there. And it fits really well. So I've got one hole drilled up there in that joist. And the reason I've only drilled the one hole at the minute is because in this bit of wood, I've drilled four holes. And the idea is I'm going to put this bit of wood up there on that joist, put a bolt through there to hold it in place, clamp this side, and then drill these other three holes and get everything perfectly in line. And this is the bolt that I'm using. Now it's not actually a bolt, it's threaded bar or ball thread with two nuts on it. The reason for that is bolts are expensive and I've got threaded bar and I've got nuts. So I'll just make my own. Of course I've still got those little grippy things that need to go in between the bit of wood when it's up there. So we'll get those in there as well. Meantime, let's get that bit of wood clamped up and see if we can get the rest of that done and get the joist put in. So I've got my bit of wood and I've got the edge of hair, my stud, my bolt that I've made up. Put that through the wood, get that through there, and then I've got a nut. Now they don't have to be really tight, it's just a bit tight enough to hold it all in place. It helps if you don't drop the nut. Let's try that again. Only this time I'll try not to drop the nut. I think it's up. Right, that's the nut going on. So I get that in place and get that clamped up. That should hold it in place long enough for us to actually be able to put the other holes in. So that's clamped in place and it's level with the top of the joist. So now I just need the drill, drill those, so I'll start those three holes, then I can just drill them straight through and everything hopefully should fit. Now all I'm doing on this one is just starting the hole because I'm going to put a slightly bigger one on the other side so the bolt goes through a lot easier. That should be enough. I want to take the clamp off and move the wood and we'll have indeed got all started.
We'll get that bit of wood out of there. There's a hole there. One there and one there. And this should go straight through. Fingers crossed. That's all four holes drilled. So now I just get all the washing bits and pieces I need. Get that sister joist mounted. And that's this joist done. And there we are. That's all in. So all I need to do now is fill that gap there between those two joists. And that one there between those two. And obviously put these uh, these noggins, a load of those to make, to go along here and along there as well. But for now though, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go in, grab something to eat, get cleaned up a little bit, not necessarily in that order. If you've enjoyed this video or you found it informative, caress the like button on the way out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more updates on the garage and see if we can get that finished. I really am missing being out there in that glorious weather, messing about with the cars that are out there on the driveway and getting them running again. You need to do that. But first of all, I want to make the best of the, of the weather the way it is. And, uh, and try and get a roof on here so we can start getting everything finished in here as well. And if uh, you're wondering what's happening with the garage and you're just new here and you're wondering why I'm doing all this, I'll leave a link up here to uh, the playlist of all the things we've done in the garage. Thanks for watching this one though. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.